اب میں انتہائی ادب کے ساتھ صدر جلسہ اخی ڈاکٹر رحم الدین کمال صاحب سے درخواست کرتی ہوں کہ وہ اپنے صدارتی خطاب سے نوازیں Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful to the Maulana Azad University for awarding this privilege to me. I would have liked to attend the entire sessions of this international seminar, but for my earlier commitment, I couldn't make it possible, and at the same time, I did not like to miss this wonderful opportunity to express my views. This international seminar, I do not know whether any of you or all of you know that the Deccan has the international involvement of the second rise of Islamic history where three great powers were involved in the rise of Islam in the world. Usmanli Turks, Olbe Turks, Masur, Iranian Turks, and then Maltex, Safavi Tex, Maltex. All the three contributed greatly to the civilization and revival of Islam. It is just a happy incident of history that all the three races are involved in making the Deccan culture and contributed greatly to its evolution. All the three have their contribution. Among the other preserved documents, we have not only have Persian, not only we have Mughal documents, not only we have also the Turkish document in our archives. Unfortunately, Nobody has so far assessed the value of this wealth of the documents we have had and how much neglected they are at the moment. That's why I would like all the three countries to get interested in finding ways and means to preserve these documents and it will be a great contribution to the history that we had to rewrite about it. Well, for example, the word sacha, which is a ceremony in the marriage of every Muslim, is a Turkish word. I don't know whether you know that or not. And there was the entire ceremony of Sacha is Turkish ceremony. And we have impact of that culture in every part of our life. Our food has that. Bagare bagan, kebab, all these have relevance with the Turkish. So we have a very close relations culturally as well as politically. This is I would, be, would like to give reference to the time when Tengiz Khan had swept through the entire Middle East, but two countries couldn't be conquered by him. One was India, and second was Egypt. Who saved this? The people, the hair, they gave their life, and he could not, he made three attempts. Of course, after that, what happened? They tried to have connection with 
crusaders. And the crusaders in Chinggis Khan, he wanted to encircle the Islamic world, have them punished. But they could not do that because India and Egypt were still not conquered. I don't want to take you to the history of how the Persian Amarat has been defending them, their own territory, and they were pursued up to India, and he had started, he had defeated Chinggis Khan seven times. This was the eighth time he was attacked by a surprise, and he was pursued up to the Sindh River. He came up to Sindh River with 800 soldiers, all 800 soldiers. The river was running full, went into the river and crossed only and saved the seven out of them. And after living there, in India, he re-prepared himself to go back and want to fight. But unfortunately, somebody cut his throat in the night and he was sick. But what happened after that? There was an Islamic life through Turkish blood and they took over the Arabs prevailed to play in Islamic world. This is the third phase of Islamic history, which we are having today, and this is a very detailed of discussion I would not like, and this is not the occasion, except giving a reference to that, and we hope all the three powers, all the three states, and we will have cultural inter interaction, and we'll play and we hope to play an infrastructure role in giving the second rise of our cultural majesty and its beauty. Thank you very much.